whoever wants to come after me, he has to deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. If you look at the two readings, the first reading and the Gospel today, we find the theme of suffering. And in the first reading today, which is the third so of, of Isaiah, because Isaiah book is divided into three, and some people say that the third part, that the third part was written not by Isaiah but disciples of Isaiah, is speaking about the evaluation of Isaiah prophecy. He is speaking about the servant suffering. He is speaking about the one who is going to suffer. And he's going to suffer because this was determined before he arrived here on the face of the earth what is going to be his condition, what is going to be his, his uh, role, the servant suffering of God. And although he explained to us uh, many things that we hear today uh, as part of the last Sunday's gospel, eh? he gave me a good ear. He opened my eye, he opened them, and he gave me the direction to walk. But it's not me who is guiding this life, but him. And that is really what Isaiah is trying to convey. In the Gospel today, Jesus takes the disciples to the place where the Romans have their establishment. Remember, the Romans were Gentiles, and so they cannot live in Jerusalem. You know, when today when we hear, you know, the embassy of America is in Jerusalem, that is a little bit too much. But the only thing is this, that at that time, the Gentiles cannot reside in Jerusalem, because holy is the city. It's only for the chosen people. And so the Romans were given a part of Palestine, and they named him after Tiberius, eh? Caesar Tiberius. And we know that, uh, that that part of the that part of the uh, what is called of the uh, of the of the region, the Romans used to have their as we call it headquarters, their cat their, their 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 place where they said every morning the governor and all the officials of they will proceed and go to Jerusalem so that they will sit at the bench for judgment or for meetings whatever it, it's called. But do they, Jesus, take them to that place where the authority is? And he asked his disciples a question. Listen carefully because this question is going to be asked by you and me. Who do the people say I am? And the disciples, hearing the people, they told Jesus whom they think he is. You are the Baptist. You are one of the prophets. You are Jeremiah, you are um, the, the, the man who went on the, on the day uh, to heaven, um, Elijah. Elijah, and many other, other things. And she said, oh, very good, she said. But, who do you say I am? Now remember, the apostles has been with Jesus for over two and a half years. And they are supposed to have a notion of whom he is, because he has told them many times the Son of Man. The Son of Man means the one that the Father has put his seal on him, the Christ. And we know that Peter, and that's why Peter is the primate among the apostles, he said, you are Christ. You are the anointed. You are the sovereign. You are the king. You are the leader. You are the Son of God. And there, Jesus was, was proclaimed by, by Peter, to be the one that really is. Other Gospels say that Jesus said to Peter, You son of Jonah did not say this out of your own, but the Spirit of my Father gave it to say it about me. And I say to you, You son of Jonah, I will build my church upon you. But today Mark, because he is the shortest Gospel, he did not go into that detail. Because remember, Mark is listening to the sermons of Peter. And today Jesus said to the apostles, We are going to Jerusalem. I am going to be put in the hands of sinners. They are going to flagellate me. They are going to they are going to take me to the cross. They are going to kill me. I am going to be buried, but also I am going to be raised. When Peter heard this, he was so furious at Jesus, and he said, "We are here. You, this will never happen to you. 
after all, you know, we are your, we are your people. We are the people who defend you. And this will never happen to you. And Jesus, in front of the disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking of what people think. You don't have the mind of God. How many times we select somebody, for example, the election is coming in November, to elect senators or congressmen to go to Washington to replace others or to, re to endorse others in the office. Who we select? Oh, I am Democrat, so I am going to select this Democrat person. Oh, I am Republican. We are going to select somebody who by his life testify that he is for the people. We are not going to go after a loser. We are not going to go after somebody who is crucified on the cross. We are not going to go after somebody who is, you know, uh, shameful that we even know him. But we know somebody who is powerful who his words become reality. And then I go to the second reading today, where James today speaks to us about what Jesus is really all about. And those who belong to Jesus are about. What good it is that you say that you have faith, and we have thousands and thousands of Catholics every Sunday, they go and profess the creed, and they claim that they have faith because they go to church, and they claim that they have faith because they support the parish, and they say that they have faith because they baptize their children in church. What good it is that you have faith when your neighbor is in need, and instead of reaching out and help, you say, good night, have a nice evening, God bless you. What good is that? You say, Father, I am not a social worker. You are not, but you are a Christian, no? If you are a Christian, your heart has to, has to open itself for that need of that person. And that's why we need to understand that faith without, without deeds is no faith at all. Don't tell me, Father, I go to church, I receive communion every day. Oh, I, I know, you know, I know the creed, I know all the catechism of the church. I can, I can quote the Bible. Even Satan can do that. Remember Jesus said? Even Satan acknowledged Jesus. But remember that faith has to be endorsed by deed. And that is exactly what we are going to look forward at the end of the journey. Not because we have faith. Oh, Father, my name is in the register of my parish. Oh, Father, I receive communion every day. Oh, Father, I go to confession. Oh, Father... No, 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 no. God is not going to deal with us with the legislation that the church is on the face of, so that you have some control. He's going to say to you, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was ill. I was in prison. What did you do for me? And if you say, Lord, I didn't know that that prisoner was you. I did not know that that, that person who lives on my street and was sick was you. What he's going to say, what you did not do to the least of my people, you failed to do it to me. This is what faith is all about, dear people. And that's why many people come to the conclusion, as I told you in the beginning of the Mass, the more you pray, the more you go to church, the more you are going to suffer. Because that's part of your Christian calling. Unless we die to self, unless we carry the cross, unless we participate in the same walk of Jesus, we cannot be saints. All the saints that we have in the calendar, and those even know, unknown to the church yet, they were people with one thing in mind. That everything they are doing is to be imitators, reflector of Jesus. That's why they are saints. Because they are blessed. Because they did what they are asked to do. So as we go in celebration of the Mass today, let us pray seriously and be really serious about it. What is my life is all about? If I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He is asking me what I have done to you, do it to another, why I am not doing it? What profession of faith is all about if I am not believing or living what I believe? And this is the great message, dear people. St. James today is on the spot that we are going to put our life of faith in the endurance or in the, in the uh, we are going to do 
our state of life and what you know really is all about that we live what we believe. God bless.